Now I'm ready to start working on the stock. Uh, everything else is turning out pretty good. Um, looking at the forearm and the butt stock, remember there's this look like the original. Uh, the butt stock look like a replacement. Um, and it's okay. It's actually a pretty heavy stock. Um, and it looks like it is some kind of hardwood. I'm not sure if it's walnut or not. This was definitely uh, probably beech wood that was stained with walnut. And what I did, I took some uh, uh, furniture refinisher to uh, take off all the old stuff and then I was using I believe it was 220 yeah 220 and 400 grit sandpaper um, to sand the rest of this off and it actually turned out pretty good um, but the thing is two different types of wood so no matter what I do, it's they're going to look different, you know. And I'm at the point where, you know, I'm thinking about just getting um, a new set, a new furniture set that uh, that matches, you know, because it's everything else is actually looking pretty good, and uh, and it would be kind of nice to have the furniture match. But uh, but I decided I'll go ahead and you know I'm already halfway through. Um, I'll go ahead and do what I can with this and see how it turns out. Um, it might not turn out great, but when I go out hunting, I'm sure the deer won't mind. But uh, we'll see how it turns out and uh, maybe eventually down the line I will uh, you know, look at a, a different set of stock. So all this woodworking stuff, I'm sure there's, there's plenty of other videos uh, on YouTube and they they show how it breaks down, takes off the varnish, um, steam it out, iron it out to get rid of the bumps, um, then sand it down again, and I will be using, uh, I don't have it here in front of me, but probably the true oil, um, and see what kind of finish I get from that. So, I will get started. So I decided to use this stuff. It is a water-based stripper, uh, paint and varnish remover, and it looks like um, I've heard it works pretty good. And it's pretty basic. You pour some in, the, in, in your little bucket or whatever you've got and start spreading it on there. Um, and once you get everything coated, um, you wait 10 minutes or so and uh, um, and then get either a putty knife or, you know, uh, something to scrape it off, um, and even a pad. I'll probably use. Um, I've got plenty of the steel wool, and just start breaking it off and uh, uh, and repeat if necessary. So I'll start off and uh, do a section of it and see how it works. So I just pour some of this stuff on there. This is that water-based stuff. And start spreading it around. Alright, I'll leave this section open just to so give me something to grab onto. And that's about it. We'll see how it works. Supposed to leave it set for 10 or 15 minutes and uh, we'll see how it turns out. So I finished stripping off the buttstock and uh, it's actually a pretty nice chunk of wood pretty nice piece of walnut. Looks like there's a crack if you can see that there. And this piece you can see the color difference. Uh, this is sanded down and tried to fill in part of that little dent that wouldn't come out. And now that the glue is dry, I want to go in and I'm going to start out with 220 grit. File out all the excess overlap glue and
and get it all smooth again. Okay, I'm ready to start the forearm. And given that this is a really dark walnut, the buttstock is, um, I'm going to start this off with uh, it's a dark walnut stain. I'm going to do that first and see if I can match the color. I mean, it's a crapshoot, but you know, given I'm, I've gotten out, rid of most of the dents and bruises and whatnot, it'll look better, but you know just I guess uh, no guarantee that it's going to match. Hopefully you can see this from the top down. Um, I have this piece of rebar over my little piece of plastic there. You can lay it on there and I'm going to use a cotton ball. You, know, you can use a brush or you can use whatever but since this is such a small piece um, I've already shook this thing up. And it sure looks dark. But I'll just go through and put an even coat. Alright, I'm ready for the true oil process. And there's the little bitty bottle of it there. each piece I'll just you know put one coating of it on and uh, what I like to do with the buttstock you can see the two holes here where the where the butt plate goes on and there's another hole you know you can make your own usually there's already one in there but I always put an eyelet on there and a hook and then I can hang it up and there's a better view so I hang it up there and then position my little plastic bucket under there to catch all the drippings or whatnot. So here's after the first coat. I'll let it sit and dry for a few hours. The day it finally come to put down and see So here's the results after about three coats. And what I did, of course, um, using the true oil. When I put it on, I just used my finger, I put a glove on, and after that first coat you saw, um, I would let it dry. It seemed like about every 12 hours, I would go back and put another coat, eight or nine in the morning, and then eight at nine or night. Um, but the, the last two coatings, um, I put on very thin, very, very light, and a good even coat, and then let it dry again. Uh, for 12 hours. I probably could have done it sooner, but just didn't fit my schedule. I got everything done during the day and I'd come back and, and put another coat on. Um, but you can see it's it's turning out pretty good. This forearm just just still looks beaten, but uh, <laughs> the finish on it's okay, but uh, but I guess it's, you know, still gives it some character there. Um, the buttstock is looking good. It's really bringing out that walnut finish, you know, the walnut grain uh, on the stock. Well, I think that is it for refinishing the stocks. It's uh, they turned out pretty good. It's not too hard of a process. Uh, just takes the time to uh, to you know take off all the old finish, sand everything down, uh, put whatever you know stain and and finish you want on it. Make sure everything dries completely. Um, smooth everything out, just go over the process and uh, and they should turn out reasonably well. Um, with these of course you know it was just a crapshoot to see you know if they were going to match or not. It matches reasonably well but but when it's all said I mean the drapes don't match the carpet you know what I mean. So. Uh, Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go with this for a while. Uh, we're net ready to go to the next step. Uh, replace any any parts uh, that we need to replace, like the rear band screw and the uh, the rear band itself. Um, and I'm gonna play with the plunger and uh, see if we can uh, get that to work a little better. But uh, 
So be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to see the next video. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, and uh, of course you can visit on our website, v3tactical.com.